the children. I hit all the buttons. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're live. Um, welcome, Kristen. Thank you for joining me today. And for anybody who is uh, joining us in the group, um, this is Kristen Dwan. Dwan. Mm -hmm. Dwan. I hadn't asked how to pronounce that. Um, and she helps people who are working on their books in a really unique way. And um, we connected a couple of weeks ago, and. It was just such a cool thing that you do that I really wanted to let you talk in the group um, so everybody can get to know this other way of helping get your story going. Because sometimes um, I know when I work with people, there's like some little thing that's keeping them from moving forward. And a lot of stuff I can address if it's, oh, I'm you know running into trouble with time or um, man, I'm having trouble committing to this. Um, some of the stuff I can address, but sometimes you need to go to that deeper level. So someone like Kristen is who you need to be talking to. So I'm gonna let Kristen introduce herself and then we're gonna dive in and start talking about what she does and talk about her backstory and her book. Cause I know that is absolutely fascinating to me. I hope everybody else <laughs> enjoys the story too. So Kristen, welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Corey, for having me. It means a lot to me. I am Kristen Dewan and I am an author. I'm also a hypnotherapist and a Reiki master. And I took 18 years to write my book. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> because there was so much blocking me, you know, like the, the writing process, I was not blocked. It was more of the releasing of the book because, you know, a lot of my clients that I work with, they're writing and we're writing very deep, deep stories about mm -hmm. their past, about growth and healing. And a lot of times we have to talk about our parents. <laughs> and so that was one of the big blocks for me was, I know that this book is important and I know that I need to share it and I don't want my mom to read it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so how I worked through that is receiving hypnosis um, and, and working on childhood issues because that was what was happening. My mom, back in childhood, it told me to be seen and not heard. Don't tell you, you know, don't talk nonsense, you know, all those kind of things. When I was a little girl telling my stories and, and, and really being within that creative flow, mm -hmm. the subconscious mind is 88% of our, our brain power. So when that little five, six, seven, eight year old inside of you, cause from zero to eight years old is when the subconscious mind is, is being cemented in, mm -hmm. If 88% of your mind says you need to be seen and not heard, quit telling your, your stories and, and talking nonsense, of course it's going to get in the way of us telling these amazing stories that need to be told out into the world. Yeah, well, that, that's something that as a parent myself, like I am constantly reminding myself of that. Like I have to be watching what I'm saying to my kids. And that's not something that like when we were growing up that our parents were necessarily thinking about, like, what is this going to do down the line? Um, and I, I know a lot of people talk about that. Like, I you know I was told, um, you know, be quiet, you talk too much, you know, what, whatever it is. Um, so it, I, I think it's interesting that the hypnotherapy was kind of the solution for you. Um, and just to be clear about that. Can you tell us a little bit about what hypnotherapy is? Because I think, you know, we get that like cartoon version, you know, you're getting sleepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all the movies of the hypnotherapist. Yeah. People. Yeah, totally. So the stuff that you see on stage, like snapping the fingers and barking like a dog, that kind of stuff is made to make an audience laugh. You know, that is stage hypnosis, which is completely different than hypnotherapy, which is what I do. I'm not gonna make anybody quack like a duck or dance <laughs> like a ballerina, but that doesn't do anything for me and it doesn't help the world. Right. I do hypnotherapy because it is a beautiful way in which you can become 100% in control of what your mind is doing. 
you know, I talked a little bit about the subconscious mind is created between zero and eight. So think about like the five, six, seven, eight year old inside of you directing your life. It's not going to, not going to go pretty well, is it? There's going to be fears, there's going to be right. anger, there's gonna be resentment, right? Or I can't do that. Mom said I couldn't, you know? Mm -hmm. So within hypnosis, what we do is we create a beautiful space in which your brain can relax. It's not sleep. You're not completely going to sleep. You're completely in control of what's going on with your surroundings and your body. Mm -hmm. You're just at a point where your brain is allowing in what you want to be thinking. A lot of the talks that I have with clients is how do you want to feel about writing a book? How do you want to feel about being seen and being heard? Mm -hmm. And we we coax that that little five, six, seven, eight year old inside of you to feel more confident, to feel more creative, to feel more focused. You know, sometimes people have problems focusing on writing or making time for it in their life or seeing it as an important, you know, thing. Mm -hmm that they need to make time for. So that's something I can help with as well. Because once something is in the habit of your mind and the habits, remember, are in the 88% of that subconscious, mm -hmm. you can't help but write. You can't help but share your story. You can't help but feel very confident in what you're writing and, and expressing. Mm -hmm. It's the conscious mind, right, is 12% of our brain power. So 12% of you wants to write the book. 12% of you, it feels great about what you're saying. It's yeah. that 88% that we need to make sure is in alignment with what you consciously want. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> and that's, um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just laughing because oh. when you think about it, it's like, I wish they taught this. When I went through hypnotherapy college, yeah. that, was, that was one of the first things we learned was the different parts of the brain and like how, how it's all works together. And I thought, why don't they teach this in school, like actual school? Mm -hmm. So like parents can know, kids can yeah. know, like this is something that can really help in so many different ways, you know? Yeah, it really would. And, you know, having people who are empowered about themselves and how they function can only help how, you know, we're working with our kids and, you know, how teachers work with the kids too. I imagine a lot of that K through two grades, um, you know, you get a lot of those, you know, your teacher's uh, voice stuck in your head too. So yeah, I agree with you. We should be doing that. Um, so how, how does the hypnotherapy and the Reiki, does it work together? Are they two separate things that you would decide like, oh, this person needs hypnotherapy. This person needs Reiki. So both of them work beautifully together and there is reasons to do one or the other. So, you know, a lot of times when somebody receives, I call it hypno Reiki, you know, we do mainly talk and figuring out what you want to feel, how you want your life to be going. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm saying the suggestions to you, which by the way, I do want to say, nobody can suggest into your mind anything that you don't believe to be true in some, okay. in some little, little way. So mm -hmm. I can't like put a suggestion in there, you know, to do something that you wouldn't want to do. Your brain knows the difference and will throw out, you know, bad suggestions. Okay. So what we do is just go really deep into like, how do you want to be feeling? And I write down like every word that, that, that person says, my client says, because that is going to be taken in as truth when you're in a relaxed hypnotic state. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's very important, I feel, in the very beginning to just really set the stage of what you want the book to look like, what you want to look like as an author, who you want to be as a human. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is usually I usually go with packages because one session is great, but then the, the, the subconscious mind, inner child, knows little things to throw out, you know, a right. weekly. And it's like, wait, I, I was never afraid of this before. And now this is happening. Yeah, wants to argue so, with you. <laughs> yeah. So then what I like to do is somewhere within the package, do a full Reiki session where we can cut cords, like energetic cords, emotional cords, you know, to old beliefs about yourself or times when you were, you know, I've had clients where it goes all the way back to like second grade where they had to stand up and like read something and the class laughed at them. So they, they can't express yeah. themselves. 
right? Yeah. So then I would cut cords to that and work on the throat chakra. The throat chakra is where you're expressing yourself. There's also the creative chakra, the second chakra, where I would work on that to help you just really flow. So I feel like both have very important separate work to do, but then they also can be put in together, which is pretty beautiful. No, oh, that is awesome. I, I'm still just so amazed, um, like the, talking with you and like talking with other people, like how this stuff from our childhood totally impacts how we operate as adults, how we share our stories, how we write our books, all of that kind of stuff. It's just, it's mind blowing. Um, and I wanted to talk about your book too, because uh, you're an author. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about your backstory, how you got into writing this book. Um, and then tell me about the book because it, it, when we were talking, I was like, what happened? <laughs> it's such an amazing story. Yeah, it's, it's what brought me to where I am today for sure. Um, the book is called Baptism by Flame, 10 Steps to Ignite Your Light Within. And basically, I fell asleep with a candle lit. So don't ever do that. Learn from me. I woke up to my whole room ablaze. I had to run through a wall of flames to get out of the house alive. And while running through the flames, I was burnt third degree through 30% of my body because I was like barefoot. Like I was just wearing shorts and a shirt to sleep in, you know, so nothing was really covered. And I ended up in a burn ward after that. And that was where I had skin, multiple skin grafts being taken and, and you know being put under for that. The first time they put me under, my heart reacted to whatever they used to put me under. And so I flatlined, mm -hmm. I did. And then they had to resuscitate me. And I remember waking up and literally feeling like death warmed over. And once, once I started feeling like this new energy, I, I, I'm all, it almost felt like an on button got <laughs> like yeah. switched or something, you know? And I felt like a completely different human being after that. Wow. That was when I was first introduced to energy. Um, I didn't know what Reiki was at the time, mm -hmm. but you know, they kept telling me you're gonna be in here for weeks or a month, you know? Mm -hmm. And you be in here longer and longer because the skin was not growing. Like, it just was nothing was happening mm -hmm. and so part of me there was a huge dichotomy of like oh my god I'm so happy I'm alive and I can't wait to write a book and start my band and do all the things and then the other part of me was like why am I still here if I'm just gonna lay here in this pain you know and but they came together one night and I just said you know what I need help and I asked the universe for help laying in my burn ward and this energy came into the room. This was 1998. I didn't know what Reiki was back then. Right. You know, we didn't have internet searches and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, or maybe we did, but I just didn't have a computer at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember like all of my burns had these like suctioning happening all throughout my body. And I left my body and I came back. And when I came back, I had no pain. I still looked like Freddy Krueger. I still had all the red and weirdness going on, but the pain was gone. The heat was gone. It used to feel like hot irons were literally just like hanging out on my skin, you know? And after that, you know, the doctor came in a couple, couple days later and he said, wow, you've really turned a corner, you know? And yeah. it went from, I'm going to have to stay there for weeks and weeks and weeks to you're getting out this weekend. And after that, I decided I need to figure out what that energy was because it wasn't anybody coming in to do work on me. It was literally from the universe. And mm -hmm. um, I went to all different types of healers and shamans and crystal healers, all that stuff. And my first Reiki session was the closest to that energetic healing, you know, from mm -hmm. the divine that I received. And so at that point I knew I need to become a Reiki master. I need to teach this. I need to write a book about it. I need to do all the things, speak yeah. to whoever will listen. <laughs> and so that's where the book came from. It, it and it's interesting because as all writers are going to know, you know, your book tells you what it's supposed to be. So at first I thought it was just going to be about the fire. Cause that's a pretty good story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then it told me, no, it's more, it's about your spiritual journey after. So that's why it took me a long time to write because 
after the fire, you know, I met a living saint, I started a band, you know, all of it started a business, all of these things were part of my spiritual journey. And then I thought, I'm done. This is amazing. I've had my spiritual journey. Then it told me, no, we, we need to be more than just a memoir. We're going to be a tool for the, the, the reader to use. Mm -hmm. So then it became, all right, now I've got to do the online portion. And at the end of each you know, chapter, there's a place where you log in and you can do a workbook along with the book. There's guided meditations. So it becomes more than just a sit down read book. It's a let's yeah. let's do this workbook, you know. <laughs> and so finally, that's why it took 18 years. Finally, I felt like it's done. I'm on my next journey now with um, that's where hypnosis came in. Um, I've lost 150 pounds in the last four years through self hypnosis and you know, that goes to show, you know, all this time, the Reiki healed me physically. It was very good with the physical and, and inspiring me to do things and get very focused on what I want to create in the world. And the hypnosis had to come in to really heal that inner eight-year-old who started eating a lot when her, you know, parents were getting divorced and all that kind of stuff, you know? Yes. So I was at 400 pounds at one point and now I'm, I'm 150 under and I'm about 60 to my goal and I feel amazing. And it was when I started doing the self-hypnosis, that was when I was able to really release the weight and not have to worry about it coming back again because I changed my habits in the subconscious. Yeah, yeah. that is such an amazing story. <laughs> and it's the next book. <laughs> Um, I love that, uh, that the idea of the book changed over time too. And, you know, I always talk to people about how like you can write a book quickly um, in something like this, like sometimes you have to wait for the story to play itself all out yeah. and you'll just know, like, yeah, this is the end point right here. Um, I'm sure you felt that when, whenever you were like, okay, all this stuff, all this stuff, all this stuff, this is the end yeah. point. Yeah. Well, yeah. the end of that book for, this, now, for the book, <laughs> the next one. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm like, I never got to write about the weight loss journey, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I love that you have the tools to go with it too. Um, I, I've had people approach me and say, oh, this is a memoir. I'm like this can be more, this can be so helpful for people. Like, yeah, it's cool to read about someone's story, but when you give them something and say, hey, you can do it too. You can move past this. You can, you know, here's the light at the end of the tunnel, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how did you decide, like, what, what tools was it like? You went through your book and said, okay, um, this is what I'm talking about here. Like, how did you decide what to share for the tools? You know, when you have a business like I do, where I'm constantly helping people, mm -hmm. I don't ever take, you know, like, oh, I'm the healer and I helped you. It's like, no, I've, I've helped in the process of your body and your mind doing what it needs to do to get you to the level you want to be. So mm -hmm. why would like, I, I was asking myself, like, why wouldn't my book do that too? It's not right. just about me, hear my story. Yeah. And, you know, so what do I, what I always tell people is, this is not, you know, just a memoir, it's a tool. And it's you being able to go on your own journey using fire, like I, I, I teach something called a bullshit bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, like one of the things I do, like up and down the coast, I've actually done it like at many different um, uh, events, live events, like on stage. And so mm -hmm. fire is such a cleansing, purifying element. And mm -hmm. yes, it brought me to my knees, it took my life, but then it gave it back and I rose like a phoenix. So yeah. I wanted my book to be this tool that helped the reader go on a spiritual journey with fire, but not have to end up in a burn ward and burn their house down like I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that you took something that feels like it can be so disempowering and you've created your, your power from that. Yeah, <laughs> I am a amazing. phoenix. <laughs> I am made of fire. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I haven't seen any questions pop up. I know we have a couple of people watching. So hello, if you're watching, um, if you watch this later, you know, drop your questions below. Um, but I, of course, I don't want to keep you all day. I know you have other things to do, but um, 
Do you have anything that you would want to tell somebody who's kind of living in that space? Like, I want to write a book. I have something going on. What would you tell them? Just start. <laughs> Just start. And, and I, I have to like literally put writing into my, my uh, calendar. Like I had dates and, and I never, I use a Google calendar, so I would never just delete like if, you know, cause life does happen. I get it, especially people with kids and things like that. But if something, you know, gets in the way, move it, don't cancel it. Right. Don't mm -hmm. delete it. Just move it to the next day, move it to later and really have the sacred space for your writing because it's like a muscle. Right. And the more you do it, the easier and the stronger it becomes, you know, um, and also you, everybody has a light within you, everybody. And like the darkest, most scariest thing can become such a healing power for your, you to release and get it out on, you know, in book form, but also for your readers to be inspired by, you know? So yeah, just start. <laughs> Definitely. That's very good advice. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, and you had mentioned that you had something for all our viewers. Um, you wanna go ahead and talk about that? Yeah, I have a free gift I'd love to give everybody. Um, if you go to thehealingwoods.com, and I'm pretty sure you'll put the link at the bottom, mm -hmm. on the front page there, um, I give away a free hypnotic download. And it has beautiful music that is, is created to bring your, your brain in, in alignment and also bring in feelings of peace. The hypnosis is bringing you through um, a journey to bring in feelings of peace in this chaotic environment we're living in right now. So I'd love to offer that to all of you. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you the link so you can put the direct link to it. Okay, awesome. That is a wonderful gift. So thank you for sharing that with everybody. Um, I did wanna say we had a comment here. Oops. Miriam says, it's my dream to be a writer. So. Um, <laughs> I know her and I would love for her to be able to get that story out too. So um, hopefully our interview today helps you out a little bit, Miriam. Um, yes. Yeah, so we will put the link below and um, can you also share uh, your links for uh, the book and everything else? You know, where, where can we find you if people want to connect with you? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm under Kristen Dewan, CHT, that certified hypnotherapist. Okay. I'm also under the Healing Woods um, on Instagram um, and Facebook. And where else? I just downloaded TikTok. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet, but <laughs> I don't even have that yet. At some point, I'll be doing stuff on there. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's, you can find the, the book on my website, thehealingwoods.com, or you can just go directly to Amazon and it's there as well. Okay. Oh, I don't know if we mentioned the title of the book. Oh yeah, it's Baptism by Flame, 10 Steps to Ignite Your Light Within. Very cool. I love that title. I do feel that the fire did baptize me because that yeah. was when I sprung out of that fire as yeah. the complete whole spiritual being I am today. So. Very cool. I will have to go on and get a copy of that because that just sounds so amazing. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and so we will drop the links below. Um, if you have questions for us, absolutely comment. Uh, let us know uh, what you think if you have questions. Um, Kristen, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, you know, everyone have a lovely day. <laughs>